to the Carriageway E3 podcast 2016. Uh, I'm sorry, John, I got a bad start. Yeah, whatever. Um, we're doing this because, uh, like, Jacob and I, huge, huge fans of video games. And um, E3 is sort of the Super Bowl for... For gaming, and I mean that's, I I don't like the Super Bowl, but like this where the biggest movers and shakers in video games like come together to like show off to beat chests, uh, and it's where you're, you're likely to get your most exciting video game announcements, um, and every year Jacob and I spend countless hours of speculating and just like you know you know we creating a wish list of things that are never likely to happen uh and it's it's a lot of fun so thought it would be a good idea to record it and see if anybody else likes to listen to us uh so let's go through um just the conference schedule and um, just kind of go through the dates and the times and we'll start out with uh, EA which is on Sunday June 12th at 2 p.m. Mountain Time where we are uh, 2 p.m. on Sunday on Sunday that's a weird time so EA is not uh, doing their thing associated with E3 they're doing it across the street, basically, from what I understand. But for our purposes, like, they don't have to be associated with the ESA for... It's it's E3. Yeah, yeah. So, for the first time, they're, they're starting it. Um, last year, Bethesda started it. Uh, it seems like e is crawling backwards a couple of days. It's, it keeps moving. You know, mm-hmm. who's going to move... Who's going to start it off next? Next year's probably going to be on Saturday starting it. I something. would prefer that. I, I like yeah. having this stuff on the weekend. It's it's hard to consume during the work week. Yeah. Um, it's just hard to handle when you yeah. know, trying to figure out. I think that would be a funner that would be a fun weekend of sitting around. Yeah. Uh get yeah. some hot wings. Oh yeah. So EA, what what is a reasonable predictions for EA to show? Um, probably, do you think they would have a Mass Effect Andromeda demo? I mean, it seems like they would probably, have to, yeah. if that's early 2017. Yeah. Um, they're probably going to, which is like something I'm excited about. You know, EA's putting a lot of eyes on them this time. Like, you know, it kind of just got to be, in the past couple of years, EA was just like... Filler? Yeah, like whatever. It just, it... It just, I guess, throw it on in the background. They're not going to really show anything. It got we got comfortable with that time. Now they're saying no. Pay attention to us this year. We're starting off the show. We're kicking it off big. So that kind of gives the impression they. I think they're probably going to show everything they possibly can. Um, I hopefully. Uh, th- what year was it that they had nothing to show? It was really uh, embarrassing. A couple of years ago. Yeah. A couple of years in a row, it seems like. Um, yeah. Um, and before, when they were like situated between, um, were they after Ubisoft or before Ubisoft traditionally? I can't remember. I can't remember. But like they were kind of sandwiched between uh, Microsoft and Sony. And if they had anything to say, they would say it. Like anything big to say, they would say it at Microsoft or Sony. So, like, kind of leaving their own press conference in this no-man's land of kind of uninteresting stuff. Or just, you know... um, But, yeah, like, hopefully they they really bring it. Um, And they have a lot of potential to show things that, like, we care about. uh, Including Mass Effect Andromeda. 
what do you think? Like, well, is this, they're, is they're this gonna, something? They're gonna, yeah, they're going to show some, they're going to show Mass Effect Andromeda. They're going to show. I think Mass Effect Andromeda will be one of the biggest thing, one of the biggest pillars of the show, and, as it should be. But are you excited or not about this game based on what they've shown so far, which was a teaser trailer last year? Um, I'm not excited. I'm like, I didn't really, you know, I like. I play Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3, I, I like them, but ultimately I don't care about those games. I don't, you know, I'm not passionate about Mass Effect. I'm not interested to really jump back into that universe. That seems like something more I would picture you being hyped for. Did you finish Mass Effect 1? No. But you played it? No. Wait, well, you didn't? I didn't play it. That's, that's my favorite one. It, but... I think what has me excited about the potential of this new game is that my favorite aspect of the original Mass Effect was just exploring. There was a, like a huge emphasis on exploring that was something that was streamlined out of those games with each sequel. But I think there's the promise to go back to just exploring like in a big universe. Uh, but, like, I mean, I don't know what would necessarily make you think that when you look at the transition from Aspect 1 to 2, then 2 to 3, progressively getting more focused on third-person shooting, more linear. Well, they showed that one demo with the the, the Mako uh, the, the Mako car driving around an alien planet. And maybe I'm just basing it completely on that When did one. they show that? I can't remember. I, all I remember was there was like some leaked gameplay thing, and maybe is that what you're thinking of? No, it's a it was a different thing. It was an official, oh, okay. official thing. And you know, like who knows how big a, and I guess it's just that's what I want it to be. Um, okay. It it has room. It has room, I think, to be really exciting, or disappointing, as well. Um, what else? Uh, so, Star Wars things. Oh, that's right. Okay, so each of their Star Wars projects that we know of, um, did, I think they, uh, had announced that there is a Battlefront sequel coming out? Yeah, I don't know. I, or, like, usually I, would... I don't, if I see EA News, I don't usually retain it because I don't care. <laughs> well, like, I'm not... I don't care about Battlefront. I don't care about the like, only Star Wars project shooters. I'd be excited about seeing would be Amy Hennig's Star Wars game, but I don't think we will see that. Pro- it's it's a long shot, but I think it could be very interesting. Um, yeah, but like I have no idea what it is uh, other than she's collaborating with uh, Todd Stashwick, who she was co-writing Uncharted Four with. So, let me read my Todd Stashwick impression. Fifteen years! <laughs> God, I hope that when they announce that, it starts out with uh, Todd Stashwick narrating over the top of like a map, saying, Fifteen years you left me in that rotting in that hellhole. Well, you know, to be fair, like, halfway through development, EA is going to pull the plug and then just recast him with Troy Baker. Probably. <laughs> He's, Amy Hedding will be forced out. Yeah. He's going to leave due to weird changes. Druckman? Yeah. Druckman will be the new, running the new Star Wars yeah, game. Yeah, he's the C- new CEO of, uh, he's like, of uh, EA. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, and then his first call to action, or his first, his first act <laughs> as president is just to fire everyone. Yeah, exactly. It, Neo Gap jokes. Um, so then, I guess the other thing that people would probably be excited for that we don't really care about is Battlefield One. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I don't care. Um, I mean, cool. It's, it's I, a slightly different setting, which is exciting-ish. The only way that they can make me care is by making it actually like a character-driven story about. Existing in the trenches of World War One, but I, it's not going to be that, and it's going to just be 
shooting dudes. The uh, <laughs> the action version of Valiant Hearts. I don't, but <laughs> Valiant Hearts. I don't think I don't like Valiant Hearts either. I so. really like that first trailer. <laughs> the trailer's cool. That was a great trailer. Um, yeah, the the game itself was a little. It it didn't capture the spirit that I thought it was or no. was going to. Um, I guess another thing for you know just to move on from Battlefield One because we don't have anything very enlightening to say about it. Yeah, I, I don't care. I'm going to the store. All right, bye, mom. Bye, mom. <laughs> <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Mom, call. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to timestamp this so you can cut it out? No, whatever. Um. <laughs> Mom, I'm leave me alone. I'm in my room. <laughs> <laughs> More hot pockets, Mom. Uh, okay. Uh, whatever. Anyway. Um, yeah. Just. Do we want to explain no, why whatever. we're recording this in no, my dad's house? Whatever. Okay. All right. Um. So, like EA, like, do you think there's a potential for them to announce a new game like Unravel? I. Th- like it, maybe Unravel is just like the tip of the iceberg of like a like a bigger initiative, or maybe it was just like a crazy one off. Like or, who knows? Or maybe they made it to like kind of test the waters, and that on um, to see how something like that does. And I don't think Unravel did particularly well. I don't know that, but just I I don't know. I don't know either. It it seemed like it it garnered a decent amount of critical praise. It, but you know, like it came out the same day as Firewatch, and I think Firewatch probably did better. Yeah, yeah, I, we got Firewatch instead. Probably, I, probably the right call. I played the demo for Unravel. I thought it was cute. Um, Looked pretty. Oh, it wasn't the uh, that um, Titanfall two? Oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Um, th- didn't play the first Titanfall because I can't get it up for multiplayer shooters i just just don't care but like the art the kind of the the premise it sounds like it could be a really neat thing if it were in a different genre um yeah Titanfall 2 don't care yeah whatever um there but uh respawn had announced that um god of war 3 director stig Amusin. Amusin? Yeah. Um, is directing a new Star Wars project. Oh, okay. um, but that can't be very far into development. So it's probably not an announcement. Especially if, like, Amy Hennig's game yeah. isn't, you know, and that's been in development for years now. Yeah. Um, well, there are other Bioware studios. Um, probably not a new Dragon Age. No, uh, I am curious if um, Bioware Edmonton, the the home office, uh, they used to be a two team studio, um, one making Mass Effect, the other Dragon Age. Um, I don't know if that's still intact, and that if they have some other greater project from Bioware Edmonton. This might. Be stupid if this wasn't the case, but I thought I remembered something about there being some sort of rumors about there being a new Knights of the Old Republic or something like that. Well, was that before or after the MMO wasn't announced and came out and flopped? I think after. I thought it was like maybe just some people like saying they wanted it and oh, they I, interpreted it. But I would really like that. I am a huge, huge fan of. It probably the, wouldn't be like Knights of the Old Republic three since. Now, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 are canon, I guess, to Star Wars. Well, they, they st- still, I think, are technically running the Old Republic MMO. Like, that's still a thing that exists. Yeah. Um, I, I ho- Hopefully Disney would let them make something like that. Um, I'd be more excited about that but than, like, a Mass Effect and drama for me personally. But I also... Not that I'm even very passionate about Star Wars. I don't... Well, it's... Like, Knights of the Old Republic is... Like, my enjoyment is that of that is not associated with Star Wars because it's so removed from... Yeah, yeah. Because it takes place, that, like, 5,000 years before the movies. Uh, you know, just, like... It's only so... 
like it's almost exists in its own space in my mind like it's it's like a different prop like kotor is a different property than star wars in my mind yeah um are we ready to move on to the next conference um yes okay i'm sure we're missing something but oh i'm sure anyway uh bethesda 8 p.m mountain time that same sunday so we were previously concerned that it would conflict with our game of thrones (laughs) but it looks like it won't it'll be an hour later the game of thrones for us but uh yeah uh Uh, what did you mm. think of, but well, last year Bethesda had their very first E3 conference. It got um, a lot of praise, but I don't think that it was particularly interesting good or interesting for my purposes. Um, because they only had a couple things to show, and, it, and then it lingered. But I think that was, it got praised for really lingering on those things, because it did something unique and different from any other press conference, but I thought it ended up being... A boring conference right the you know um when they had their big fallout 4 demo um i like fallout 4 um you know even like the the things that they were demoing but like that was that was boring to watch uh and yeah and, the other demo was doom and the other demo was doom and like it looked like a lot more it just looked like you saw a minute of it, you saw all of it, to me. It's like, yeah, exactly. Um, it's, I, I hope they adopt a, a different format. Um, I don't think they will. I think they got a lot of praise for that. I think they're going to go into it, and they're going to be like 15 minutes of Dishonored 2 stuff, or half an hour even of Dishonored 2 demos, and showing all the different ways you can stealth, and then the other part will be, like, whatever other game. I, I actually, that smart money is on a super-duper long Dishonored demo. In fact, probably the same mission twice, done different yeah, ways. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's going to be rough. Some people will like it, though. I'm sure... I, I I would like to play it, but or, like, I would like to play a demo of that. I mean, I wasn't... I was super excited about the first Dishonored and then I played it, and it would just, it was well put together, it just kind of, it fell flat for me. And so I am have no excitement whatsoever for Dishonored 2. And Dis- But Dishonored 2 is the only con- confirmed Con- thing? Unless maybe, don't they have that battle cry or something like that? It's called, it's like oh, their that, own. That continues to linger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that, but I, again, don't care about multiplayer. But like hero things, possible announcements would be like an either Evil Within two or something by Tango. That could be cool, um, and like I, I uh, Shinji Mikami like has a history of like you know he can make a like a lot of different kinds of games, well action games. Um, he doesn't necessarily have to be pigeonholed into survival horror. And I don't think the Evil Within did so well that, like, you know, Bethesda's like, oh, no, you've got to make a sequel. Yeah. Um, we didn't play it. Yeah, no. It, it looked like it was all right. <laughs> it looked like so it was far, all right. So far, everything that we've talked about, with the exception of Mass Effect and Dramata for you, has been, yeah, who cares? <laughs> we don't like that. <laughs> yeah, um, that's... Um, the, uh, I guess the, 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 um, I think there were rumors of a new Wolfenstein sequel, but that's not exciting. Um, at least maybe not the, for me. Maybe, people, people like yeah, that last one. It might be cool. It, 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 it probably would be cool. I thought about getting it when it was cheap, but it you wasn't could... cheap enough for me to <laughs> put the money down to experiment with something. Yeah, it's it's probably good. I hear good things. Um, yeah, but yeah, the it's hard to get like super excited about the sequel to this game that second second third hand people said were good, was good. Yeah, you know? um, I I guess the exciting thing or potentially exciting thing for us. Well, before you say that, I just want to say, uh, like, probably not any more Fallout Four stuff. It seemed 
the big DLC, Far Harbor, had just dropped. Just has dropped recently. I or think. maybe that was just last thing on the season pass. Like they maybe. could be. They could release more DLC. Um, Seems weird though. But. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like Fallout Four, but I I, I don't I don't want more of it. No. So uh, what's what's the big thing that they might that we would be interested in that they might announce? Uh, there's a very slim chance that they have simultaneously been at at Bethesda Softworks proper uh, been laying the groundwork for a new Elder Scrolls. You know, um, I don't know, like, maybe it's a slim chance. I feel confident going into Bethesda Conference that there will not only just be an Elder Scrolls 6 tease, but that there will be gameplay and it will be released this year. That's crazy. That is... That is no, there's no way. Um, but I think the uh, what sort of tempers my expectations somewhat is that uh, their ZeniMax, uh, Bethesda's parent company, like bet big on the Elder Scrolls Online, like really big. And it turned out to not be that big a deal at all, but that they had had assumed that uh, Elder Scrolls Online would be gigantic, that they may not have greenlit a proper Elder Scrolls. You to, to that, not... but it, it, to me, it's like Skyrim money shows. I think Xenomax is smart enough to see. It's just like, okay. And also with the Fallout 4 success, I think, I don't think the success of those games is necessarily from like whatever IP they're working on. I think it just comes from that Todd Howard team makes games that sell. Oh yeah, and like, and I think Cinemax is smart enough to see that, and I don't think they wouldn't be like no Elder Scrolls because clearly people don't like Elder Scrolls anymore because the MMO didn't do well. Well, I mean, the but like Cinemax, they're not video game people. Like they're they're, a bunch, they're they're a bunch of lo- pe- but they're business people, and business people are smart enough to see that. Not you don't need to be a video game person to see that. Yeah, I I, I hope so, because I'm really like I'm super invested in that universe. Um, but at the same time, it seems like each one of those games has become more and more restrictive in a way I don't like. I've so liked, I, I, you know, Oblivion was my first. I loved Oblivion. And, but, you know, going back, well, I actually played Morrowind. I mean, I watched you play Morrowind first, but, um, you know, like, even I like Oblivion is my favorite, but you can see from Oblivion is more restrictive than Morrowind. Skyrim Fallout Three was a lot more restri- restrictive than Oblivion. Skyrim opened it up a little bit, but still more Skyrim more restrictive than Oblivion, and then Fallout Four more restrictive. Yeah, more restrictive than any. You know. Yeah, it seems like they're. It's becoming less and less for me. You know. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I'm. I'm still. I'm still in. For whatever they they, they make, but yeah. at at some point they're gonna cross that threshold to where I I don't care anymore. Ho- hopefully not for a long time, and ho- hopefully maybe they can write the course. But you know, sales and critical acclaim are on their side. Um, I want to say though why I think that an Elder Scrolls Six announcement is actually plausible. I you know. It's like, you look at how scaled back Fallout 4 was, and it feels, it doesn't feel scaled back in the same way of that progression of each one is getting more linear and more restrictive. Well, not linear necessarily, more restrictive. It just feels really small in comparison. And I guess Fallout 3 felt small. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it is. Fallout Fallout 3 was, was much smaller. I'm talking myself out of it. But I gotta stay, I gotta stay true. I gotta, just so I look smart when... If it happens. Okay. Elder, yeah, Elder Scrolls 6. I, I guess the other thing um, they could do an Elder Scrolls remastered or Skyrim remastered, yeah. considering how popular that game was. And like, th- there's even like a model for it, taking a PS3 360 game and then porting it up and getting a ton of sales, like uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah. Um, I don't I mean, think I'd buy it. Maybe. I, I think you would have... 
I think to sweeten the pot, you would need the Morrowind, uh, Oblivion, and Skyrim on the same disc, but... I, I don't know. And to me, like, that would be, like, yeah, buy instantly. If it was just Morrowind, I'd buy it for 60 If it was just Oblivion, I'd buy it for 60 but probably not Skyrim. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I like Skyrim a whole bunch, but it's my... Uh, least favorite of the three I've played. Um, also, like I, we had made some crazy E three bingo cards, uh, which is a neo gaff tradition that Jacob and I have been doing. Even though we we've never been part of neo gaff until like Jacob just recently, just recently. But we had been doing that just for fun for years. Um, and one of my predictions was. Um, uh, Skyrim VR like you know I, I figure with VR being having such a big push likely that's going to be the story of this E3 is it's the VR E3 um, yeah the duck walks in and then walks back out and says it was all VR yeah everything was VR um, <laughs> um, I you know it's just like a an easy like piece of software that already exists that you could format to this medium um like minecraft style it seemed like um yeah. actually it the more i uh, when i say it out loud it sounds it sounds pretty dumb uh also i'm not excited about vr <laughs> no i do not care uh, yeah is that is that everything for from, bethesda from bethesda yeah um Okay, so then the next day, June 13th, Monday, okay. Microsoft, mm -hmm. in the morning, 10.30 a.m. Mountain Time. Do they usually start at half past? Yeah, I think so. Huh. Okay, um, Microsoft, what do we expect? Um, Phil Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> a safe bet um like how do they open like traditionally I, back when um the um microsoft had the call of duty marketing locked up they it seemed like they had opened with call of duty it seems but, like as far as i remember i don't remember what they did last year i don't remember what they did last year but i think I remember one year they started with Metal Gear Solid Five. It seems oh, like they like right. to start with the third party. Yes, I can't remember them not doing that. So yeah, um, just like an interesting third party, maybe even one that's already been announced. Maybe uh, like Battlefield One or something. Oh yeah, that's you know yeah something from EA or Ubisoft or or not, maybe I mean, like the Sonic Two. Not know. from Konami. <laughs> Well, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that would be the worst way to start Microsoft Com with uh, with soccer. Oh. A soccer game. Unless it was like Konami's coming back in a big way with the Metal Gear. With reboot. With Pachinko. <laughs> yeah. Pachinko on consoles. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, let's see. So, but of like Microsoft things, like Gears... The new Gears game. Microsoft Game Studios. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, another... Gears. That's supposed to be out this year, right? Gear, I don't know. Gears 4? I don't know, Joe. I think I it is. I, I think it is supposed to be out this year. Um, so probably another demo of that. Uh, last yeah. year, that was a pretty bare bones, pretty boring demo for... A game that's supposed to be like the ultimate meathead shooter. Yeah. Uh, and like I'm like I appreciate like trying to dial back and make it like a survival horror style experience, but survival horror is like effective because you feel weak instead of like super roided up dudes carrying like guns that are that are bigger than like you know. Yeah. Then. What's a big thing? Bigger than... Like the size of a small car. Like, you know, it's the... I know. It... it I... 
I, I question the wisdom in making uh, that move, but like I I don't care. Also, so yeah, whatever. I'm not the target demographic either way. Uh, scale bound. Oh, that could yes. Um, scale bound, I think, is the only thing. Um, Microsoft exclusive as of right now that I care about. Yeah, scale bound looks super cool. Um, I had sort of speculated, um, like even before they showed gameplay of it, that. Um, taking cues. Oh, bless you. Uh, t- and this is super speculation on my part, but uh, taking cues from Dragon's Dogma, or maybe I just wanted it to. And like I know that um, uh, Hideki Kamiya wasn't involved in the making of Dragon's Dogma, but his his old team was. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if like some of those ideas existed before he'd left. And then came to fruition in Dragon's Dogma, a game that I really, really like. Uh, And then take somebody, like, with uh, Kamiya's pedigree and just, like, really blow it up huge. And and from that demo last year, it looked like it had potential. Yeah. Uh, Super pretty. Um, Maybe not as mechanically robust as I was expecting, but it seemed like it could be really, really cool. Let's see. Also, there's like the Crackdown <coughs> 3. Oh, bless Sorry. You. Oh, bastard. Uh, Crackdown 3 or whatever. Uh, yeah, it's um, that... Uh, don't, don't care. <laughs> like, there's... Like, oh. eh, it's coming out this year, but only as a multiplayer yeah. online thing, which... As I've said how many times in this podcast so far, I don't care. Uh, you know, come back to me when you have something to say. Another thing um, would be that I don't remember what it's called. It's the one with Inafune involved. Oh, Recore. Yeah, yeah. that's um, had had a nice CG trailer last year. I think so. Um, don't know what that is. It could be cool or it could be lame. Uh, Inefune is not his batting record lately hasn't been especially good. No. Um, so we'll see, or like how much he's involved in this, because it seems like he, like people are slapping his name on a lot of things that he's only peripherally involved with. Yeah, it seems weird to want to slap his name on something at this uh, point, yeah, especially when it doesn't carry the same weight it used to. Um, but it's that team that uh, Armitage or like they used to be the Metroid Prime guys uh, and people respect the hell out of those games so yeah um, let's see also Sea of Thieves oh that like I'm not about multiplayer things but if I were it'd like, be Sea of Thieves it would be like kicking around as a pirate on a ship yeah that'd be cool That does it does seem cool um there was oh what's that uh, from the creators of Limbo? What's that uh, that uh, oh game? yeah inside inside yeah that that looks really really nice um, great great style um, love Limbo a lot. You know I think the biggest thing that could come out of Microsoft C three is the rumored Scorpio. Oh yeah oh that's in fact yeah that's probably the biggest talking point whether yeah. or not they announce this really monstrous six teraflop machine which is like five times like if it's really six teraflops that's like five times more powerful than um the xbox, xbox one. one the xbox one. um and that's like that's a monstrously powerful console um and uh the yeah, I guess we haven't talked about it. I mean, you and I have talked about it, but not on, not on um, mic. But I am staunchly against like this iterative hardware model. Um, you know, so like I'm, you know, it's it it could be a great piece of kit. I just feel like it's it's bad for the business. Yeah, and you know. 
money that should be going, like I should be spending on software, I'm instead spending a boatload of money upgrading every couple of years. Um, and I, like I always, that's why I, you know, game mostly on, well, almost exclusively on consoles is that, you know, these upgrades on PC are such a, you know, pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't like introducing that the headache to console gaming. It seems it seems like bad business, or bad bad to me. At it least. might be great business. It might be it might be fun, like, but for for me it, it's bad for me. So, just speaking for myself. Um. So. I think that about wraps up Microsoft. I mean, probably show some other third party stuff. Probably. There'll probably be a couple announcements of something we haven't seen before. If if we're lucky, not though, from Lionhead. No. <laughs> if if we're lucky, um, maybe there'll be like a cool car that they get on stage. Oh oh, I guess there's the the Forza, Forza stuff. There. I don't know. Um, it may, well, I, they do Forza stuff every like you know it's yeah. whatever. Uh, also, Cars. Um, yeah. On top of all the other things that you're not like, a big I don't, motorhead show. Uh, yeah, I don't like I don't like sports. I don't like multiplayer shooters, and I, I'm. It's not that I don't like racing games. It's that I just don't care. Yeah, I. You know, I'll say it. I don't like. Yeah, I don't like cars. I don't like anything like that either. Yeah, so. just cars in real life. Like I don't drive anymore because I just hate driving. Yeah. I hate cars. Uh. So, okay, let's move on to the next. It seems like there was something else. Oh, there was, um, d- does Rare, or does Microsoft allow Rare to resurrect an old Rare property? And the common, commonly speculated one is uh, Battle Toads. Which, back in the day, like, I mean, I'm old as balls, so, like, I remember Battle Toads back when it's new, and back when it was new, like, maybe not like you know as a how do you resurrect like a brawler like a how do you resurrect that make it important today and I can't think of a it seems like a like a bad move like well it's like to me it looks like you know I as someone who has never played Battletoads I look at their design and I think okay this is what I think. Knock off of Ninja Turtles with bad 90s aesthetic. Yeah, and that's, it's like, that's, that's it. So, you know... Early, very early 90s. Um, it's like they're, they got they got a, a tood, you know, they're like... I, I, don't, I don't care about that. I don't want that. But what, if it exists to appease those people who do want it, you know, cool, I guess. Whatever. But... Rare has like a ton of uh, IP that they could bring back. Um, but Paddle Toads is the one that's kind of been rumored and just, it, you know. It seems like the one that people are crying for oddly the most, which is maybe the crummiest one, but whatever. Like, you know, to each their own, if it makes people happy. Uh, that might be. Who sings the song If It Makes You Happy? If it makes you happy. Oh my god, that's. Um, Cheryl Crow. So in the words of Cheryl Crow. <laughs> if it makes you happy. I'd be happy if we never talk about Cheryl Crow. <laughs> um, okay, so yes. Next conference. Probably our most anticipated conference. The PC um, talk show at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. I tuned in last year just to see because I, uh, yeah. I'd, I'd like to see what's going on with PC because it like it it's stuff that could be really neat. It's last year was rough. It was, I, I would it was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah, let's uh. Yeah, I just skip past it because I don't. Really I'm, care. I'm not even gonna bother tuning in. I'm not gonna bother tuning in, and I not even gonna bother spending any more mind power on it. <laughs> so. um Synapses. Yeah. Neurons. Yeah. Uh, Ubisoft at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. Okay. Um, 
Like, I think... Aisha Tyler is the host, I think. Yeah. Like, I like Aisha Tyler a lot, but, like, those conferences are sometimes kind of embarrassing. Hashtag Girlwood. Yeah. Being maybe one of the most embarrassing. Um, Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Well, what could Ubisoft show? Um, Watch Dogs 2, I think, is a for sure. Uh, Yeah. I think they maybe even announced that that's their show that... Yeah, because I mean, I think didn't Kotaku leak that that's coming out this year? Is it they, they yeah. have to announce yeah. it? Um, do they show that Assassin's Creed that's not coming out until next year? The one set in Egypt. I don't think so. But yeah, that's probably uh, probably a smart move. Um, you know, fractured butthole. Um, Tom Clancy's poop on your toothbrush. Oh, yeah, because they have, they have the South Park. Oh. Yeah, I was just going down the list, but yeah, we can talk about South Park. Um, I'm glad... Wait. I was just about to say I was glad Obsidian is still getting work. I don't think Obsidian is back for this one. In fact, like, I think... We I don't re- know that, though. I think I remember seeing that Obsidian wasn't involved, and that... Wow, that really... Bo- <laughs> and suddenly, like, I remember being bummed out at the time, and then, like, a little packet of depression just really it's like oh mm-hmm. like I like Obsidian I I like them to continue getting work and existing yeah maybe I'm wrong well how about we say this uh anything we get wrong tell us and we'll maybe do another one of these after E3 and we'll we'll say all the corrections that we got most likely we'll get zero corrections not because well because nobody's listening because well I don't I don't like doing that kind of stuff. If somebody's... Anybody oh. who would be hearing this right now would be listening. Yeah, I, I would be so thrilled for people to, like, let us know. Yeah. Um, because, like, I think that's the... Uh, like, I love podcasts with correction segments. Um, yeah. Because, like, when you're, like, making your opinions based on, like, false information, it's like, like I want to know so I can have, a, like, a better opinion... Yeah, uh, more informed opinion um, about what we're talking about. So uh, Ubisoft, I mean, I think they got some like Tom Clancy game. Was it last year that it was just multiplayer shooters? It was just like straight up, I don't know, military stuff. And th- and then like the big surprise was that For Honor game, which was the 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 military multiplayer game, but with swords. Yeah, I, if it's more interesting to me, but like I'm, st- I'm still not. I still don't care. Um, still stands that we don't really care about multiplayer stuff. Yeah, I mean, unless it's, unless it has something to say, unless it, 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 it it's added to like an existing narrative, um, like Journey or uh, Dark Souls style. Yeah. Um, I there could be something cool like a um like uh the Ubi Art initiative. I think it's a cool initiative. I haven't liked any of the Ubi Art games I've played. Yeah. Child of Light made me extremely dizzy for some reason. <laughs> something about it made me extremely motion sick. I do remember you talking about that. Um and Valiant Hearts. And Valiant Hearts, which I I played and beat Valiant Hearts, didn't care, much care for it. Um, I so wanted to like Child of Light more than I did. Like every like all of its parts seem like it, it is hitting the checklist of things that I should love. But how it came together, um, it just kind of ended up being really long winded and boring and sort of directionless. Uh, I want that I want them to revisit it and like you know I think there's there's a, there's a lot of talent there's a lot of creativity there's a lot of passion in that project I just want to see it like become something that I would really like and I there's and I and I think it, I think that team if they got another shot could could make that game um but like, is there any like wild card Ubisoft announcements that we could potentially care about? I mean, aside from like five new 
so, Tom Clancy games. So, you know, I think it's maybe, it would be kind of, this would maybe be a good point to talk about three things that Verendis said last year. <laughs> Neogaf star of Verendis. Pretty much a celebrity at this point. Um, uh, his avatar is the uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr. from Tropic Thunder. Yeah, the, the yeah. And um, so he, he says, uh, basically, just, just take his word as gospel. Oh, he's a proven industry insider. Uh, he, as far as we know, he works for Sony. Yeah, he's probably European because it seemed like one time he looked down on us lowly Americans, but whatever. Anyway, so he said three things last year. Uh, one, as Ubisoft new IP, new Prince of Persia, and uh, this one wasn't necessarily about Ubisoft, but Joe and I kind of narrowed it down to really Ubisoft is the only one that makes sense, is he said a naval RPG, Western developed. Right. And that like really fires the imagination. Um, and Jacob and I had speculated that of uh, that team that made Assassin's Creed for Black Flag, which was a like my favorite Assassin's Creed game, because it had things to do that weren't associated with Assassin's Creed, and like Jacob. And the I, worst parts of Assassin's Creed Four were the Assassin's Creed things, <laughs> right? Um, and like you, know, I remember when we like sat down and we were playing that together, and we're like, wow. Man, imagine how great this game would be without this Assassin's Creed crap in here. So suppose, like, somebody at Ubisoft had that same idea and made it into a proper naval sailing role-playing game. Yeah. Like, like standalone, apart from Assassin's Creed and all that baggage. I love that. Yeah, it... That... Has the potential to be very exciting. Uh, if but I mean, this is speculation off of speculation off of speculation. Yeah, but I just want to say it's a really so, it's a really flimsy. But even say it is happening. Okay, naval RPG made by Ubisoft. It bums me out. They will almost one hundred percent have the same exact formula of every single Ubisoft game today. Of that is, that is a. Hopefully they know that the the tide is turning on that stuff, that yeah. th that that doesn't review as well to just have the like mega collectathon yeah. game design that 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 doesn't float everybody's boat anymore. So I guess two things that maybe Ubisoft could potentially announce would be like a new Far Cry, what, which I did, doubt. We did Far Cry Primal just come out? Actually. Yeah, just yeah this year. Oh, I so. would be. Probably not. No, probably not. Um, the other thing would be maybe like a Beyond Good and Evil 2. Oh, that's right. And um, the uh, Michelle Ansel. Um, making Wild. He's making Wild, but apparently he still works for Ubisoft as well. Presumably making something. So Beyond Good and Evil 2. Uh, that, that could be very interesting uh, if it exists. Yeah. And, but it's probably just another Ubi Art Rayman game. Probably. People love those. I don't... We've never played them. I I played some Rayman games. Yeah, I mean, not the Ubi Art ones, though. I haven't, yeah. They just... I. They just looks like something I, I wouldn't like. <laughs> man, like, man... We I, are very I, down on everything. I am the most limited person on Earth. <laughs> Unless it, if it has any sort of multiplayer thing, we're out. If it has any cars, we're out. If it has any, yeah, I'm Man. joking a little bit, but it's it certainly sounds like I'm, I, I I like a lot of different sorts of things, but generally speaking, these just really big, like Ubisoft games and EA games, like I generally avoid. The Sony bias is really going to come out when we, then we get Sony and we're excited for nearly everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's... 
Oh, there's plenty of like dumb Sony stuff. Yeah, we'll talk about. We'll try to bring up some stuff about Sony that we don't like. Okay, we're still on Ubisoft though. I think I don't know. There's not a lot more to talk about. Is there anything like wily? Like I guess Beyond Good and Evil Two is that game. Is is there? Is there big splash? Was like look, we still care. Yeah. Or the naval RPG for me. Uh, assuming it, it, <laughs> if that it, even is it, Ubisoft, if that even was real. And yeah, that's what Verendus was even talking about. Yeah, so. Uh, you want, are you ready to move on to Sony? Yeah. So Sony, 7 p.m. That Monday, June 13th. Okay. 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Because once again, we're in the mountain time. You yeah. can do your own conversions. Yeah, we're in the mountains. I look outside, I see mountains. Yep. Therefore, we're in mountain time. <laughs> That's no matter where you go in the world, you're in the Himalayas, in mountain time. Yeah. <laughs> Appalachians, mountain time. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, so, Sony... Um, Did that turn into a very George W. Bush argument there? <laughs> you wander in the mountains. It's mountain time. Don't that would get off political. I, that's not political. I just that's what it sounds like. Dude, if you me. talk about any politician, you're getting into some political stuff, no matter what you say. I don't want to even cross I, into that. I don't care, and I don't vote. So even that's very political. So let's just get out of that. Let's go back to Sony. Okay. <laughs> uh, now let's talk about the president of Sony. No, uh, uh, so. Last, at PSX, Sean Layden, president of Sony Computer Entertainment America, or is he just now like some, anyway. I think he was promoted to some other thing. So, but, any, yeah, big, he's, big wig at Sony, he's walks pro- out he's on He's probably stage. going to be the one talking to us most at the conference. Him and Adam Boyce, probably. Yes. So, Sean Layden comes out, he's got his smug look on his face. Um, you know, he... That guy looks like a gopher. He looks like a gopher. Uh, and he's, and you look down, and he's wearing a Crash Bandicoot t-shirt. So, Crash Bandicoot was not announced at the PlayStation uh, uh, experience. Yes. Uh, so, that just kind of leaves you to suspect. And there's, there's certain things revelations lately let's say of things that Jacob and I have like experienced that maybe would lead some credence to Sony making a new crash we don't want to spoil anything on this podcast um no I mean of course not but it's it seems like it's a almost a given now that this is a thing that exists yes uh the only question is who is making it and like can they potentially make it good I think it would be, um, okay, to answer the first question, I think it would be Mark Cerny's team. Yes, who made Uh, Knack. Who made Knack. Because people love Knack. Yeah. Uh, So, can we, we, before we go into continue further talking about Crash, can we just mention that we're not actually excited about this Crash reboot? Oh, no. Like, I, like, I, like, I thought back in the day that Crash Bandicoot games were fine they were like fun sort of distractions i don't have like the affinity that some people seem to have um we would have a greater affinity towards something like jack and daxter but right. only jack and daxter one yeah none of the rest of the jack games i yeah like i think naughty dog for me was never better than the original jack and daxter i don't know i've gotten pretty close uh, yeah i like uncharted 4 and last was a whole bunch and the, the Uncharted series as a whole, but, like, I, I also liked... Yeah, that's, never mind. But, like, who makes... who? So, Mark Cerny and the Japan studio making yeah. Crash Bandicoot? They were probably making Knack 2, and they just were told, Hey, we got Crash IP. Okay, well, we'll just skin Knack 2 to be Crash, because... That's the only one... I think that's the kind of game well, that's, the Crash Bandicoot reboot would be. Well, that's, like, I remember, like, in disclaimer, neither of us played Knack. <laughs> um, but, like, pe- when people were bitching about that game, 
and like from what I've seen and like I played a demo of it it's like yeah this is this is pretty much like how I remember Crash Bandicoot playing like back in the day um and I wonder if the, the people who remember Crash Bandicoot fondly either don't remember how that played or they didn't give Knack a chance or something or that stuff just doesn't hold up anymore um that if you literally just reskinned Knack with a Bandicoot, people would just be over the moon for that same thing. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. So I, your second question, though, was will it be good? And for us, probably we won't play it. I mean, if you sort of, uh, like, Jack and Daxter took some of those, like, rudimentary uh, Crash Bandicoot skills and then, like, like gave it some weight and then put it in this like great big interesting world uh like there's the potential to like do that again but why would you need the crash bandicoot license yeah uh but like i think there's to re like my excitement would be if they sort of did that again like take those same core mechanics and like give them some weight and tighten them up and like set you loose in this really fun world like I could get totally get behind that um but that also doesn't sound like Crash Bandicoot no because like the uh, at least the original three that I'm familiar with um very linear very very focused and I think that's what people say they want when they're like nostalgic for it and that's that's not for me yeah so, I don't know. That will probably be announced, though. Um, I, there's also the potential that, like, Naughty Dog themselves have a small team making that on the side or something. Yeah, or, maybe. you know, maybe in, in the... Then what would Mark Cerny's team be doing? Crying over bad knack reviews? <laughs> yeah, I guess still. Um, I mean, I, I maybe they could... They would have farmed it out to, like... Sanzaru or Insomniac those guys could those guys would might need some work and yeah. they could probably do it as, as good as anybody yeah um well let's move on from Crash uh let's see other things from Sony uh let's talk about the Sony let's kind of go through some of the Sony studios so uh ones that have the potential of being there uh Sucker Punch Yes. Second uh, Punch could be there. When uh, Infamous Second Son came out... 2014, in I think. 2014. Early 2014, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, they would be just about ready to show something. Yeah. Um, what is it? Uh, NeoGAF has been abuzz with the idea of um, Sucker Punch making a Spider-Man game, but the proof for that is really light. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, like, the thing is, it, it seems cool. Like, that would be a good fit. That seems like it would be cool. Uh, probably not happening. Uh, other than, like, the name for, like, this the Sucker Punch developed Spider-Man game would be perfect. Like, this perfect synergy if it was called the infamous Spider-Man. Wow, that's a great idea, Joe. How did you come up with that? <laughs> Just out of the blue. Oh, weird. Just on my own. Wow. Completely you, independent huh? from you anybody. You just woke up one day and you were like, oh, the infamous Spider-Man. Yes. Uh, I mean, aside from it being a great name, I don't think there's any proof for that being a thing. Uh, but I'm not implying Joe stole that name from somebody else. I that was I came up with that, by the way. <laughs> I'm not trying to imply like Joe stole that from the internet. I'm just saying that. Yeah. Um, but like they could be make they could make a sl- be making a sl- sly sequel. They could be making a, something completely new. They could be making an infamous uh, sequel. I don't know why. Sly is a potential, you know, with the movie. Oh yeah, yeah, because they showed uh, a movie trailer. It seemed like some time ago, so that there was probably a game being developed alongside that. Uh, okay. Not not necessarily by Sucker Punch. Maybe Sanzaru. Yes, of uh, uh, Sly Four. Well, Sly, it's not called Sly Fire Four. I don't think it's like, but, but it is the fourth Sly game. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sony Band. Uh, 
basically confirmed to be making a game called Dead Don't Ride. And their last game was Golden Abyss, or Uncharted Golden Abyss on yeah. Vita back in 2012? Maybe. I think so. Yes. I th- so, like, it seems like they should be ready. But, I mean, like, I've got to wonder with these 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 teams that traditionally do handheld games, like, staffing up and getting the talent and the workflow created to make it, like, a big, like, a big console game. Like, ready at dawn, did it? Yeah. <laughs> Worked out really well for them. I like the order. I, I did, too. I, I, thought it, I thought it was competent. Yeah. Um, yeah, that Sony Bend, Dead Don't Ride, uh, the, the hubbub is that it's an open world game with horror elements. Yeah. But the name sort of, like, kind of sounds like it's a, like, fun apocalypse. Um, when I first heard that name, and I think it was Shinobi from Neo Six Gaff, two. Yeah, Insider Extraordinaire. Um, he did, like, a poem thing about it, and it made the game... It made me hate the idea for the game, and I ranted to Joe for hours about how much I hated this, of this idea of, like... You just, yeah, that fun apocalypse. We're just, we're just loving, just going and bashing dude skulls in and riding our, either bicycles or motorcycles, whatever. Either way, I don't like it. Could be cool, but it might be be cool. um, God damn it, that um, Insomniac game on Xbox. It's um, Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, Sunset Overdrive. Like they, they had some success with that same idea. Yeah. Um. Could could be cool. I yeah. have no way of knowing. We'll probably see that though, at uh, this E three act. So. Probably. Uh, Guerrilla Games Horizon, rumored to be delayed. Yeah. Not confirmed yet. I am really excited about this game, and I don't like like Guerrilla Games other games that I've played. Like I just think that they're really pretty, but just super boring and dumb. Yeah. Uh, the Killzone games. I, I'm not a fan, but like I've always admired their their tech and their art. Um, but like Horizon uh, looks super cool, um, and they're hiring all the right people. Like they they hire the lead writer from Fallout New Vegas, and they're like poaching a bunch of talent from CD Projekt Red. Yeah. Hot off The Witcher Three, like. It seems like it could be like this really slick, super cool, um, Western role playing game, you know, with a great, great aesthetic. Yeah, I, I'm very excited about Horizon. It... Probably one of Sony's most exciting things. Yes, that they have. Uh, but like, it could very easily be garbage. Like, it just, like, shows really well, and then you play it, and it's like, ah, uh, this is terrible. Yeah. I, 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 that's a real possibility, I think. But it's, so far, just wows me. Yeah. Um, From the, basically, the one demo we've seen. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Naughty Dog just got done with Uncharted 4. Seems a little bit too soon, even, for announcing DLC. But maybe. Maybe. Like, maybe, you know. Um, yeah, Uncharted, yeah, just Uncharted 4 DLC. Um, the Sony Santa Monica, uh, God of are, War 4. are long overdue to, uh, announce God of War 4. Um, and like, <laughs> disclaimer, like we've played the God of War games, like, and I'm not speaking for myself, it's like, they're fun diversions at most, but really pretty, well-made diversions, but super dumb. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential to like open it up and make it something bigger and greater, but they never do. Yeah. Um, um, but like, you know, with, you know, shake up and management and talent at that studio, maybe this is their, their time to shine. Yeah. L- like with Guerrilla Games and Horizon. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, That'd be great. Uh, bu- 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 uh, let's see. Media Molecule is making dreams. 
Yeah, could be cool. Like I with dreams, it's uh, man, I like I, I've watched multiple extended demos of people making things. Uh huh. I like and the, that looks like it's the funnest part of just like making making shit. Yeah. And then like showing like another player going through and playing it, the playing looks like garbage yeah it looks like oh this is the least fun thing in the world like making things looks fun the actually like sending these levels out to be played man i wouldn't do that no (laughs) that looks like a terrible time yeah kind of like little big planet (laughs) yeah well but that making things a little big planet wasn't fun though no and playing things on little big planet wasn't fun (laughs) yeah you know what the best time we ever had with Little Big Planet was when I glitched out the game and we couldn't play it for months. That like six months when we couldn't play Little Big Planet was it, it was pretty sweet. Yeah, it was probably I yeah <laughs> my favorite part. Little Big Planet is like one of those that on paper is, should be something I love, but yeah, I'm not. Uh, I the, the most interesting thing. From, from from my perspective that Meaty Molecule has ever done is that uh, Tearaway. Man, Tearaway is... Like, I know you're lukewarm on it, but, like, I was really impressed. Um, and I... But I think that creatively has gone to do, a, like, a different game. Like a Kickstarter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like... Uh, um, Nights and Bikes. Yeah, yeah. That looks really awesome. So, like, I'm excited for that. Not super excited for what Meaty Molecule is doing. No. Otherwise, um, Gravity Rush Two. Oh yeah, this Gravity Rush Two could be very very good. I I I liked I liked moving around in Gravity Rush the the first game. It just like I like like I. It's my favorite superhero game. Yes, like just exploring that that space. It was so like interesting and the music and like the art direction and just like the the game feel of just like just like like rocketing yourself through the sky yeah it just like felt really nice and like the uh yeah and this this from what we've seen of the gravity rush 2 just looks like they've amped everything that i liked about the first game just like up to 11 last guardian yeah hopefully coming out this year I, it seems more promising now that IGN did its whatever look at it and like that you know I didn't watch any of that just because I don't I'm gonna buy that game I don't need to see more of it I just just tell me the release date so I can just put it on my calendar and just yeah hey we're finally talking about things that wake we wake like. me up when September ends finally talking about things that yeah the yeah Fumito Ueda um, yeah yeah I, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure he's a terrible person, but I like his games. <laughs> well, obviously he's made some sort of you know deal with the devil to look like he's 13, even though he's like in his 50s. Yeah. Like he never ages. Uh, so let's. See. I think that mostly covers uh, the uh, Sony main game, like Sony's first party stuff, right? Uh, bu- 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 it seems like we're missing something important. It's just like, is David Jaffe's really dumb new game? Oh, is that out? Drawn to Life? Uh, it's, yeah. I, I mean, it's... You know what? If you're going to make a dumb multiplayer shooter, that's probably as, as cool and aesthetic as you're going to go for. Like... No, no. That game looks stupid. <laughs> Screw you, David Jaffe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like... Whatever he can handle it, I'm yeah. sure he doesn't care. What I think, yeah, is yeah. David Jaffe stole Jacob's car stereo. Yeah. yeah. Hence the venom. Yeah, there's a. Oh, Kojima. Kojima-san. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I now that like, clearly not going to now like clearly not going to show footage of his new game. I'm willing <laughs> to bet that he'll come out on stage. And it, and announced the title of his new game. Yeah. A la Agent style. Yeah, that, that worked out that. really well for Agent yeah. and for Bioshock Vita <laughs> and yeah. for Resident Evil PSP. Yeah. 
like yeah anytime you announce ju- a game with just a logo and a sony show guarantees that game never comes out yeah i would bet though that that he will do that i would bet that that would be a big blake sony you know yeah your house comes out on stage and he's like i'm to introduce coach masan i you know i wouldn't think so except for they already did that on their like youtube channel of mm-hmm. uh Andrew House like introducing Kojima in that same fashion, yeah. Uh, that th- that they have a partnership, um, yeah. I mean, I just I think it's a win. Like, I don't like seeing people up on stage. I like seeing lots of games, but having Kojima up on stage, I think that could be a win. Yeah, especially yeah. after like you know what did like the the drama uh, with how all that stuff went down with Konami. Yeah. So, let's talk about some Square Enix stuff. Maybe there's no Dude, Square Enix press conference, okay, so but probably, Square Enix stuff that could potentially be at Sony, and maybe potentially at any of them, but there's most, just not... Well, no, really, is the Square Enix stuff is most... If outside of their Western developed stuff is almost, you can guarantee that it's... All their stuff is going to be at the Sony conference. Anything they would show. I just kind of want to... With no Square Enix press conference, that kind of bombs me out. I just want to talk about Square Enix and some of the games that they have in the Oh, queue. sure, because that's some of the most exciting stuff. And some of this stuff might show up at Sony. So, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, hopefully, if if that's even like a glimmer on the horizon, hopefully they have more to show at E3. I would like it, it you know, put like a release... Not necessarily a finite release date, but, you know, show something 2017, um, because... That that would be cool. That would be cool. Uh, do they have, like, one more Final Fantasy 15 trailer? There's already too Please many... Please don't. Fish. Please don't have a Final Fantasy 15 trailer. I am super excited about that game. It has my money. It has my money, too. I don't want... But I don't want to see it anymore. In the, we watched the Uncovered 15 event. I closed my eyes through... All of those trailers. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see more. Do does Sony show Persona Five on their stage? Maybe or just in a montage. That's not Square Enix, by the way. Oh no, it's... just unrelated topic of Final Fantasy Fifteen. Yeah, probably in a montage. Ah man, it's like I think, I think Sony should give the Persona team their due and just like give them like at least a firm shout out and on an E three stage because I think. That could be the critical darling that they're at the end of the year that like system exclusive that yeah. critics remember. Um, but that's unrelated. Um, Square Enix, uh, World of Final Fantasy that got a, that got a trailer on last year's stage, it did, but the we've seen gameplay of that and it's. Nothing you'd probably want to demo on any. No, it looks it looks pretty rough. I'm still interested, but it looks rough. Um. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna show that again. Um. Uh, there's. I had theorized that um, that Dissidia arcade game uh, in Japan the is is it's gonna come out on PlayStation Four maybe exclusively. So that might get that might get stage time. Yeah. Um, you think I am Setsuna? Not again. I mean, did that get stage time? Did that no, get no, it got stage time on um, Square Enix's conference, right? Yeah, Square Enix's. I think it was announced at Square Enix. Yes. It was like Square Enix's last. Actually, no, it didn't get stage time. It got a a name, I think. It got that... a name and some concept art. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the and Square Enix is. I think the big, like X Factor, if um, if Dragon Quest Eleven or any of the like Dragon Quest spinoffs gets lip service. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think we'll see anything at Dragon Quest Eleven on the stage because, like, the time to like show anything from that was at the whatever big Square Enix Dragon Quest event they had, and they said nothing about it. Um, but I think... Showed nothing of it. I, th- you know, Dragon Quest is so good, and people in the West just don't know it. And, yeah. like, I think they just need, they just need to, you know, 
hey, this thing exists. This is cool. You will like this thing. Uh, and just need somebody to sort of nut up and, you know, just give this some airtime. Yeah. To, to and like Dragon Quest Eleven from you know what was like what I've seen, you weren't impressed, but like I thought it looked nice. Uh, could could be really cool. Could get people. Could I'm, get Westerners. I'm into extremely that series. excited for Dragon Quest Eleven, and I was just more disappointed by what I saw. You know, I wasn't that I wasn't impressed. I was just disappointed that it wasn't in my mind. Like further along, it, or it more... wasn't like it feels like I wanted Dragon Quest Eleven to take Dragon Quest Eight and blow it up huge, it and could... maybe that's what this will be. But the aesthetic, I can't. It just looks like Unreal Engine Four. It looks like like yeah, they used the see... preset environmental assets of un- it, it, it did it did look the environments did look a little it did look nice but like not there's nothing about that that screamed dragon quest to me with the yes. exception of seeing like you know the protagonist and the monsters monsters, kind of monsters. um yeah uh kingdom hearts 3 whatever maybe maybe, maybe gets a new out. trailer like i like who knows how far along that is yeah um Let's see. Uh, okay. Um, Nino Kuni 2 by mm. level 5. Yeah, not Square Enix. Yeah, by level 5. But yeah, and published by Namco. If, yeah, it's going to be at a, a stage, it'll be. Ho- I would like for it to get some more lip service and a release date. Um, yeah, I really like that first game. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But you, but things you were lukewarm on that, that I loved. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's an art. That's a. Yeah, that's just your thing. It's just. No, I think I think Nino Kuni too, or Nino Kuni is something we're talking about, but not right now. It's it's something that I you know formulate my real thoughts on it, but. Um. You. I mean, potentially there, like of things that they could show. Uh, with a release date. Like, and who knows when that's coming out. Like, when they showed it at the PlayStation Experience, like, you know, they had English voices, they had, like, all yeah. cutscenes. They didn't show any gameplay that I could discern. Um, but, I mean, there's the potential that that game is, like, ready to go this year. It seemed ready to go from what they showed. Yeah. That that would be a pleasant surprise. I would very like to, to play that. What, uh, a, what about uh, From Software? Oh yeah, the going back to Verendus. Thank, thank you, Verendus. For... You, you, this will not be the last time Verendus is mentioned. No, it's half the reason I check NeoGAF every day. I, I'm a lurker, not a poster. Um, the uh, that uh, he had said that Sony has a three-game deal with From Software of Dark Souls and Bloodborne fame. Uh, Bloodborne being the first of those games. Mm-hmm. Um, and like Jacob and I, like off mic, have speculated, long speculated that uh, one of the, or the two, one of the two remaining games is a sequel to 3D Dog Game Heroes. But that's just pure speculation. Oh, it is. We, yeah, we went, we went a little we nuts. Can, we can talk about some of those things more when we get to the bingo card segment at the end. Okay. Or we, but you can talk about it now. Talk about your... Well, we had... Okay. It's, we really liked 3D Game Heroes. You know, like this really cool callback to retro, to old old role-playing adventure games. And um, we thought, it's like, oh, okay, how, how... And what had got me thinking that there might be a sequel is that there was a, dy- there was a dynamic theme on the Japanese PlayStation 4 store. And the dynamic theme had like various Japanese PlayStation mascots, and intermixed with those was like these like characters from 3D Dot Game Heroes. It's like, well, that's a weird thing to bring up this fairly obscure PlayStation Three game. So, and then like coupled with this horrendous leak about the three game deal with From Software, and From Software, I believe, owning the rights to 3D Dot Game Heroes. Like that, I thought it was interesting that Sony was trying to keep int- or like keep that alive. 
in a new dynamic theme. So like, like that was part of you know, part of the reasoning. And me and Joe, uh, kind of talked about it, and like I had thrown out the idea they could call it four D game heroes and make it evocative to sixteen bit RPGs like Chrono Trigger, and you're going through time, time because hence four D game heroes, and like you know you double the or like double the voxels so that they look like sixteen bit, yeah, cube men. That'd be cool. Yeah. And women. And women. Yeah, and like, yeah, make it uh, this Chrono Trigger callback. Um, we had forgotten to talk about uh, Quantic Dreams. Oh, yeah. Uh, Detroit. Yeah. Become uh, Human. Become Human. <laughs> I hate their subtitles. I hate Quantic Dreams st- subtitles. Yeah. Beyond Two Souls. Detroit Become Human. Yeah, so they announced that. I can't remember my to- uh, Paris Games Week or something. Yeah, the trailer looked great. Like, yeah. I, I really... I'm always, like, watching to see what the, that team is doing. Like, and I think, like, David Cage, I don't think he makes the best games, but I think he has good ideas. Like, he, he's he's got a good head on his shoulders. I just, like, always wait to see it. Like, I'm waiting for it to really come together for me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Also, Polyphony, we forgot. So, Grand Turismo Sport. Uh, yeah, it's... Whatever. Cars. <laughs> Cars! Also, isn't there, like, Sony San Diego or something that makes MLB? Uh, yeah, and they're making that, like, top-down, twin-stick multiplayer thing. Kill I shrugged. Strain? I shrugged when Joe said that. Um, I mean, there's, like, other s- smaller studios. Um, there's the rumor of the... the I guess there's actually going back to horrendous like leaked like the but the existence of five like i just held up my fingers to the mic <laughs> showing five it's like yeah you can see that right um <laughs> the the existence of five planned japanese role-playing game projects being funded by sony uh and jacob and i have spent countless hours speculating what those could be and like that leak was years ago. So either those projects one year, a little over a year ago. Oh, okay, but like either those projects have been shelved, or they're no. like about well, ready but, to show. Uh, some of them. For, okay, the, Verandas. This is I'm um, you know, I've read the quote recently because me and Joe have gone through it recently. But can we uh, just call this the Verandas cast? Yeah, sure, Verandas cast. Um, Verandas basically said. Uh, JRPG 1 and 2 would be announced soon. JRPG 3 would be 2016 at the earliest. JRPG 4 and 5 would be late generation uh, art titles. Um, But he also said that none of them are really on risk uh, being like on... Of being cancelled. Yeah, there's no risk of them being cancelled. But like I think we had and this is some time ago and I can't remember exactly our reasoning, but I think those first two projects we had narrowed down. One of them was being de- uh, developed by CyberConnect Two, of uh, who made um, the uh, uh, Dot Hack, uh, the Dot Hack series, and um, they made some like PS4 tech demo. Um, the. Uh, <laughs> Why can I not remember it? Like the, the big Hindu gods and they're beating the crap out of each other. Azure's Wrath. Azure's Wrath. Um, and, you know, was was one of them. Um, and the other was a level five project that isn't Nino Kuni 2. And that that's... Ryan just didn't say that. That's just our speculation. Oh, that, yeah. That yeah, was our speculation. Um, should, when I say it out loud now, it sounds like completely baseless. Yeah. But like... This is just years. It's basically one of us threw out a theory a couple of years ago, and then we've just built off of that one theory somebody threw out. It's a very rickety house of cards that we build our arguments, and yeah. Probably why none of our predictions ever come true. Yes. But then the third one, though, just, I mean, uh, JRPG number three, we've speculated to be me and Sweet Cone 6, uh, because... Verandas then a year 
in 2014 had said uh, there was a new Stewie Cohen game and it would be shown in 2016 at the earliest, which almost with the which was almost the exact same description he gave JRPG number three. Yes, um, and like Jacob and I are huge Stewie Cohen fans. Yeah, um, would would love for that series to come back in a meaningful meaningful way to get some of that talent back and uh, like dive back into that world um, you know but the uh, I mean that was all shortly before the Konami implosion or it became like official so like who knows what survives Joe's a little bit more down I gotta have faith Elder Scrolls 6 announced this year Suicone 6, Suicone 6 announced this year yeah Oh, and like another one of your predictions. Final Fantasy VI remake? It's the year 666. It's the mark of the beast. Yeah. And Fumito Ueda sold his soul to the devil? <gasps> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> this is how our theories are formed. <laughs> exactly. Let's, 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 yeah. Uh, we'll get to the Final Fantasy VI remake thing in a little bit. Um, First, I wanted to talk about uh, something that we haven't mentioned yet about Sony, PlayStation 4K, and the Neo. Oh, or, yeah. Or the Neo, whatever, slash Neo. Uh, yeah, I'm still, uh, still against mid-generation yeah, still against. hardware refreshes. Still against, still think that sucks. So, something that's kind of interesting, though, going alongside the PlayStation 4K was uh, the fact that when like the big leak kind of rumor leak came out is deep down was associated with being one of the games that would take advantage of uh the ps4k oh deep yeah down being made by capcom oh yeah that's very surprising to see that that still existed or was that rumor like for sure legit well who, who he was reported on that uh, that was that um osiris black oh that's right Yes, yeah, that's, yeah, that guy, that guy's legit. He's like a GameStop exec or something. Yeah. NeoGAF member. Um, Bish approved. Yeah, the... Uh, Bish checked, not approved. Yeah, the, the, that deep down, like, the, it was, like, they'd had it playable at, like, Tokyo Game Show. Yeah. Um, it looked rough as a, like, free-to-play dungeon crawler multiplayer thing. Uh, it looked like nothing I was interested in, which was like a huge turnaround because when they, the first initial deep down trailer, it led me to believe that it was a Dragon's Dogma <laughs> sequel. How many times can we bring up Dragon's Dogma in an hour? I'm, I'm open to talking about Dragon's Dogma. <laughs> Dragon's Dogma, Dragon's Dogma, Dragon's Dogma. Um, yeah, like I, and then it turned into this sort of cheap crummy looking free to play bullshit uh so if it's still alive i hope it's been retooled to be something interesting yeah or interesting to me yeah definitely um so are you are we fairly confident that we've covered at least all we want to talk about with sony ah uh, we're probably forgetting stuff but whatever yeah, okay. Um, I think it's probably enough on Sony. That is the last press conference. Um, Nintendo does not have a direct this year. Uh, Nintendo on the following day, June uh, 14th, Tuesday, has some sort of live stream of the Zelda demo. Yeah, it Demos. is. It's, yeah, super, super long stream. Um but if that if it's it, like truly open world, they probably have a lot of content to show. Yeah, probably show like a dungeon, uh, maybe a quest. Uh... Yeah, probably one of the demo. Like I think it had it had been confirmed that there are two demos. I think so. So uh, I, we'd speculated that like the the first one, is probably a tutorial dungeon demo, and then the the second demo is a run free for yeah x amount of time. Like dick around in this world, yeah. Uh, probably the best way to do that kind of thing. Um, yeah, you know. But 
Ho- hopefully, it could it's be cool. I guess. Hopefully, it's cool. Like those guys have have talent. It, it, it's the probably what Zelda should have been going toward all along, instead yeah. of like becoming super focused. Yeah. And that's now, true. so like that's it, hopefully getting that stuff kind of back to where it should be. Yeah. Um, I think it has potential to be good. Yeah. I, uh, Nintendo has come out and said specifically that their new console, the NX, would have no place at E3. Um, but, like, as they've announced that, like, this, this Zelda game is also coming out on the newer console, presumably a much more technically proficient console, leads me to think that they would want to show that version, at least in some capacity, during the stream. Um, I don't know. Which is which is against what they said. They said specifically they wouldn't. But I I think they they like some executives going to get cold feet and go like we can't not show the better looking version of this just to like at least wet people's appetites. Because they have to know that most people didn't buy a Wii U. <laughs> yeah. They 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 really got to know like you know it's eating into their bonuses and stuff like yeah the, the Wii U not not a great success. Um, and that if, if this new Zelda is going to be like this big thing is most of their sales are probably going to be, or at least a good chunk of their sales are going to be focused on this new hardware. Yeah. That, you know, to show the version that like probably most people are going to buy. I mean, assuming the NX is a more powerful thing, assuming it's a, you know, not just a, you know, the the same hardware with a different form factor or a different controller or, or something completely bizarre. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to have a gimmick. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, N- Nintendo doesn't make things without gimmicks anymore. Yeah. I think it'd be smartest if they just came out and said, this is a, just just a video game console. That's, here's the controller. It's just a controller. Here's, it's powerful, it plays good games. It, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's... Maybe I'm wrong, though. Yeah. Um, so are you ready to move on to the bingo cards and then to the end of the show? Yeah, yeah. You ready? Yes. I don't know the best way of doing this because the computer's on the other side of the room and we have them on the computer. I can just... Do you, do you want to pause the cast and then can we like print out the bingo cards? Or at least write down the talking points from the bingo card so we have something to look at. Yeah, okay. We can... um, I need to take a pee anyway. Yeah, we'll be right back. So... Okay, we're back. Uh, I got some bingo notes... Well, I'll put those up as the display, and there they go up there for the visual. The bingo cards are a visual display for gotcha. the YouTube video. I, I figured they might be. Um, and just like to explain real quick about like how that works, like normal bingo, you know, when we get something right, then you put, you know, a piece there, or you mark it, and, you know, and... <laughs> Yeah, like you're bing- seriously explaining how bingo works. But like, this isn't like normal bingo, like it's where it's random, like gambling. Oh, okay. This is like we've made like various predictions that are more or less likely. With us, usually less likely. Um, and then when we get something right, we'll mark it. Uh, and for everyone's information, <laughs> uh, how many years have we done bingo cards? I don't know since. I can remember watching E3. Yeah, well, I, years. the bingo the bingo card thing, it's, I think, of 10 years. Yeah. 10 years of bingo cards. I've never gotten a bingo. I'm sure I haven't either. No, it's, and the thing is... is but we, we try to make it pretty out there. We, well, that's, we make it that's the fun, is that, yeah, we... Uh, none of the, the things that we put on our bingo sheet, uh, not only are... Uh, they're not not only are they not confirmed they're they're not likely yeah uh some of them less likely than others but like that's generally how jacob and i like to play is like how uh, is that and we have to agree it's like okay this is not likely to be there 
Yeah, so often, you know, Joe will be like, Hey, Jacob, can I put the Call of Duty will be at Sony? <laughs> I want that. And, and what about, can I put that God of War 4 will be announced? Yeah, like the Now, thing, Joe. That it's like, you know, the what's the point if you're going to like reach for the low-hanging fruit? It's like, okay, uh, of course Phil Spencer's going to be on stage. Of, of course there's going to be a Call of Duty game. Of course there's, like... There's a, there's going to be a Forza game at the Microsoft. Well, that, I don't know if that's actually going to happen. Oh, there's no way that... There's no way there's not... A, anyway, but like, <laughs> this these low-hanging fruit, like, what's what's the point? So, okay, so, we, yeah, we, Joe, we go, Joe and me are party boys. We like to have fun. Now let's get into <laughs> it. Um, so, let's talk about mine first, just because I think mine's probably more important. Well, yours is certainly more out there. <laughs> Uh, we've talked about the majority of the things on on there already. Um, I wrote down four things that uh, I think need mentioned. One is that the middle space on there, it says free. Uh, then Call of Duty at Sony. That doesn't mean Sony's going to give out free copies of Call of Duty. That no, means it's just the, the it's free just, space. Yeah, it's the free space in there. Again, so. we're explaining bingo to anyone listening. <laughs> The free space, but we, Jake and I, like as a joke to some people on, on NeoGAF who would put Call of Duty on their card, like, come on, man. Of course Call of Duty will be there. Of course Call of Duty, and it, like, uh, that Sony has, anyway, like, has the marketing for, call, like, the marketing, co-marketing for Call of Duty. Of, of course Sony is going to kiss Activision's ring on stage. Like, that's... Of course they are. Like, there's no yeah. way they're not going to. So we just... Yeah, that's just a, joke. Yeah. That's a free space. So I think one thing that we mentioned, but I said we'd talk about later, so I think now's a good time to talk about it, is the Final Fantasy VI Remake. I, I, I do like how you're, you're saying that, like, some of the guys on Easy Allies. <laughs> oh, yeah, well... Okay. Unintentional. Call out to those awesome dudes. Yeah. Um... So yeah, Final Fantasy VI Remake, and do you want to explain why you think this might be a thing? In the from the from Joe and Mai's um, pro, prophet, I guess you could call him, Brentus. <laughs> is uh, is he York. really a prophet if he just knows these things? <laughs> uh, he's a pretty cool dude, uh, Brentus. I mean, he, actually, is that a, like technically is that a, like somebody you want working for you? <laughs> the guy who'll run to internet forums with like all the background. Like I like it. Like, I like it too. Like yes, like more power to you. Please, please, keep, yeah, keep leaking, buddy. Um, but uh, so Final Fantasy VI remake was something that Verenda said was going to happening, or happening potentially, potentially happening. happening. He also so in his giant list of like things that he said giant, were happening. Yeah, he he likes to leak like big leaks. Like, yeah. So in his giant like, list, info dumps. In his giant list. Uh, there was a bunch of games, and then he wrote like a couple paragraphs afterwards, and he said two of those games might not exist. Be- one of them because it's secondhand information, and the other one because it's very early in the works. Um, so potentially Final Fantasy VI could have been one of those things. I have faith that that's a thing. Uh, also, the- to give credit to that is Square Enix's Happy New Year's uh, card was a redesign of. A, a very famous piece of Yoshitaka Amino art from Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. It, it, it was very evocative of it, but like dressed up in in a very modern style. Like you could very easily see it being a piece of concept art for like a Final Fantasy VI remake. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it, def- and it definitely was supposed to be the redesign of it. It wasn't really hidden. I mean... It, it looked it's... like a redesign of Terra... Um, yeah, and the main character from Final Fantasy VI. And I can even throw up the image right here on screen. There, it is. that's a good idea. Uh, so uh, notice how like the six in it is red for the for, anyway. There's yeah. tons of things. There's tons of little things like that. It, it seemed like a like an artist having fun making like a subtle but powerful call out to this thing. Yeah. So uh, the other thing that also. I, that would be amazing if done right. Yeah, it would. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was the Dreams 2.0 is just dreams. Uh, just what I meant by that is meaning 
Uh, it's kind of the big buzzword going around on NeoGAF. Uh, Gopher D, I think, was the first one to say it. Uh, Gopher D, an, another uh, industry insider who also worked for Sony. But the difference between Verendis and Gopher D is Verendis feels much more... He's not, like, doesn't feel like Sony wants him doing that, where Gopher D feels like Sony wants Gopher D to be going and getting hype about them. Well, yeah, like, Verenda seems like he's, like, in a, like, disgruntled employee who's gone, like, slightly rogue. Like, Where Gopher D, I think, is that Sony is aware of Gopher D. Sony wants Gopher D yeah, to keep like, doing that. Wait, Gopher D generally doesn't spoil things. He just sort of... He just gets a hype going kind of thing. And he, and he said Dreams 2.0 in reference to last year was the year of Dreams. Or the, the E3 of Dreams. Uh, for Sony's creatures. conference, where they uh, announced like a bunch of these these games that you like long time players thought would never happen, and it was amazing. Uh, like man, like after that conference, Sony's conference last year, I was I was so pleased. Uh, and Gopher D is trying to assure people that you will be pleased in the same fashion this year, and I just like it sort of boggles my mind. Like how they would like get all their ducks in a row to make it happen two years in a row, um, but you know, if they can pull it off, I yeah. I will be happy. Uh, so what I meant by just the dreams two point is just dreams is meaning kind of a subtle joke, I, I guess that is there isn't going to be a year of dreams two point and is that, really yeah. what Gopher D is just saying is. The game Media Molecules Dreams is just yeah their, that's the, the their dream game of this called year. Dreams is the Dreams 2.0 <laughs> that Gopher D is referencing and not uh, yeah. and not actually and not the E3 of Dreams yeah uh, the other two that I want to just talk about was just Nintendo at Sony and Nintendo at Microsoft that mostly just comes from uh, me and Joe sort of have talked about you know Nintendo going third party all uh, how Sega went third party. And hopefully better than how Sega went third party, <laughs> but Nintendo going third party and how abs- abs- extremely shocking it would be for at either Microsoft or Sony for them to announce um, to inter- Reggie, you know, coming or Shigeru yeah. Miyamoto, or to have like a like it would be really surreal. It would be like one of those moments, like from last year, like. Announcing the Last Guardian, like reannouncing the Last Guardian. I think it would, be a, 3. it would be a bigger moment than Shenmue Three or the Last Guardian or Final Fantasy Seven remake. Because yes, it wouldn't just be, "Well, this game is cool." It'd be, "This is changing." The, this is changing the gaming landscape permanently because yeah. you can't walk back from that. Um, it's unlikely. Uh, probably, maybe one of our most unlikely. I think it probably is the least unlikely. Uh, Part of me also wanted to just say that because I think it would make a. I thought it'd make a lot of people in NeoGaf angry. Oh, um, yeah. so far nobody's even <laughs> really seen our bingo cards on NeoGaf, but uh, that that is like I, I do like like that idea of just pissing off people on NeoGaf. Yeah. Um. So now let's go to Joe's um, Media Vision RPG. I thought you would maybe want to elaborate on. Oh yeah, so um, Media Vision, the kind of a workhorse uh, Japanese developer, been around forever. Uh, famous, I guess, famous in quotes for uh, the Wild Arms series, uh, which you know, pretty well respected. I I like some of those. It's not uh, something that like it's not like a suicide announcement. That no, we're like oh my god, please, Media Vision. RPG. It would be good news, It'd but be, like, yeah. uh, but they're also d- uh, developing the Valkyria Chronicles spinoff, Valkyria Azure Revolution, uh, but supposedly they're hiring for a- another PlayStation Four project that isn't that, um, and I'm speculating that as is this is the only kind of game that I know that they make. It's it's a role playing game. Uh likely Sony exclusive. Uh and, you know, maybe maybe Sony would think that it would be important enough to give some stage time at E three too. If if it's a project that exists and far enough along and I mean you know, it's it's a potential just unlikely. Yeah. 
The other one I thought you would want to mention was just Mega Man Legends 3. Oh yeah, well I was thinking like the the uh, like last year's year uh, year of dreams bringing back or announcing these things that nobody thought would ever see the light of day. Um, Mega Man Legends three, and I'm a huge fan of the Mega Man Legends series, but like the the third project never got off the ground for a lot of were just one reason because <laughs> Capcom <laughs> run by dickheads. Um, so, like, it didn't end up getting made, even though it had a lot of fan support. And I can see, as, as Sony did with Street Fighter V, like, flip the bill for that just to make, just to get it done uh, and release on their platform. I could see Sony giving Capcom some money to make that happen. And it would be, uh, for me, it would be, like, one of those big announcements, but... Jacob is fond of bringing up that, like, like me and only like four other people like like those games. Yeah. <laughs> so like like Sony wouldn't care enough, but I I think it, I think it it has that cachet, or it potentially has that cachet to be like an announcement for an E three of dreams. The other point I just thought just to clarify what the. The slot for uh, Adam Boy's saying Dreams 2.0. Oh, yeah, because uh, Jacob and I were talking about how, like, Gopher D had coined the term Dreams 2.0, and then it sort of became a, a buzz word. And, um, and Jacob and I were talking about how, like, that term has probably came up at, like, a marketing meeting at Sony where they came up with the term Dreams 2.0, and it's probably the term they use internally. And like the Adam Boys will come out. Adam Boys will come out and say specifically in his own word, word you know, will say Dreams 2.0 when announcing a game. Or yeah. like, you know, it's like, I think he will say that. I think maybe the most likely thing <laughs> on. Probably. In fact, I'd be surprised if he didn't. Yeah. But I mean, again, it's, it's not like a super likely prediction. I don't know. Yeah. Uh... So that's that's our E three predictions and speculations, hopes and dreams and uh I mean, was there any other sort of last out there sorts of things you wanted to say? Oh, it's you know man, the the bingo cards are super fun. And yeah. And we're never right. Never ever. But, that, it, but that kind of is what part of the fun is. Yeah, that's you one know, thing that we wanted to put on there that we didn't think about until afterwards was um some sort of an Agnes philosophy. Oh yeah, the yeah the um, Square Enix tech demo. I thought it looked amazing. Uh, yeah. Like just conceptually, just like wow, I want to spend some time in that world. Um, so our speculation would be that that actually got a budget and it's going to be a game, but yeah, I mean it could be. Uh, yes. The we were, Jacob and I were talking about yesterday that um, like maybe we've reached already reached the saturation point in Final Fantasy announcements. Yeah. So for the for the immediate future until it's like games start releasing because like you know Final Fantasy 15 uh you know has been announced isn't out yet World of Final Fantasy has been announced isn't out yet Final Fantasy 7 remake has been announced isn't out yet uh like uh, like I'm kind of of the you know impression that that brand like each one of those sort of it doesn't if you announce a new uh, entry in that series it doesn't take away interest from the other it, it all kind of builds into like interest in the in to the whole franchise but like I, I do wonder if the uh, the marketers at Square Enix don't think so uh, yeah and would try to discourage that kind of thing because yeah like a Final Fantasy Agnes philosophy announced and a Final Fantasy 6 announced and so you have all of these Final Fantasy projects out in the ether and none of them yeah and like they've done it before um uh but you know that's that's been a while yeah so anything any last comments joan or should we wrap this up it's been i think we're at like an hour and uh like probably 45 minutes now at this point yeah it's uh, it's e gonna be fun. It's E three comes around once a year. There's nothing quite like it. It 
I was trying to describe it to our mom earlier as, like, it's sort of, like, for me at least, it's, I always get the sensation that, uh, you know, kind of like that feeling of just being a kid in Christmas time of, yeah, there's nothing, you know, it's just magical. It, it just feels good. You're excited for weeks. And, it's, and like Christmas, is it's often disappointing. But it's, there's always that feeling once it's over, like that. That was it. Yeah, that's in fact that's almost every year except for last year. Last year exceeded my expectations handily. Yeah, and every you know Joe and I, I'm sure you can tell our most anticipated conference is always Sony's, and it's like every Sony conference we're just like okay, fifteen minutes left, like okay, you gotta show something. And then, and then they, it, they spend a, like like a fifteen minute demo on the lamest on game Mod game. Nation Racers. Yeah, Mod Nation Racers. You know, it's and, like and then nothing against Mod Nation Racers, but that's not what you or like a dumb VR demo or a dumb motion control demo. Like yeah, Sony, Sony is probably the dumbest of yeah. the, the 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 big the major hardware players. Like just. They do dumb things all the time, mostly dumb things. But when they succeed, they just just knock it out of the park. Yeah, you know it's it's just always that feeling of when the lights go. You know, like that at the, at the end of the conference, the lights go down. You can see people walking off stage, people getting standing up in the crowd, and I and I stand there waiting for like about fifteen seconds, hoping just like, like, somebody come back on stage and say, "Oh, one more thing, one more thing." Yeah. And I'm surprised that more conferences don't do that because that leaves such a huge impact. Anytime somebody does the one more thing, well, I guess you have to back it up with something. Because, yeah. Because they'd actually done the one more thing with the David Jaffe twisted metal, fell completely flat. Yeah. Or the, the one more thing with that, um, what was that, uh, that multiplayer shooter by Zipper? Massive Mag. Ac- Mag. Mag. Massive action game. It's just... Oh, one more thing that it fell completely flat. Like, like some executive thought that was a big deal. It's like, it's not a big deal. No, it, nobody thinks that's a big deal except for like this one guy in the boardroom. Yeah, who was like so fucking out of touch. I bet nobody has said "mag" in reference to the game Massive Action. Uh, what was it? Ma- massive action game. In it's reference to massive action game in probably five years. <laughs> Nobody has said oh. Meg in reference to that in five years. You know, and like I didn't play Meg. No, like, and maybe it still has a, a crowd of it, people playing it. No, it doesn't. They killed the oh. servers. That was the last time I heard about it. Like, And that was like <laughs> years ago. There's probably one person out there who thinks about it regularly. I mean, it, Sure. Remember Maybe. how awesome it was when they announced Mag? Um, oh, yeah. But anyway, that's that's uh, the that's Carriageways E three, Verendis cast. Yeah, the Verendis cast. Um, yeah, it was fun. I think it went well. Yeah, uh, first time doing a podcast, so yeah. Uh, hopefully, more of this. Uh, hopefully, one after E three to talk about how disappointed we are. Or how much we got wrong, which is, God, that fill weeks, weeks of podcasts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do, do we, do you want to come up with a sign off on the fly? We, we didn't talk about this before. Um, so, something related to the channel name? Carriage. Carriage. But in your face. <laughs> Why did I hear butt in your face? God, that was embarrassing.